La question de the question is raised of scientific expertise versus uh, political decision making. Now, the interfacing issue between the two is pivotal for the uh, climate change issue because ever since the 670s, there has been co-construction of the political issues and the scientific issues, the one influencing the other, both in terms of practice and objective. Now, interfacing scientific expertise with political decision-making is a vast debate, and I would like to limit myself to a few stakes because I believe they are essential for the climate change issue. There are, there would be many more and I really count on your being uh, patient. Bear with me. The first question is raised for our democracies. Why does this raise a question for our democracies? Because if scientific expertise has too much influence on decision-making, we feel that we are sliding towards what we refer to as the technocratic system, where scientific knowledge and technology take the lead to the expense of uh, the political world and the values associated with politics. Now, what is the role played by scientific expertise in the human society, a human society who chooses its leaders, votes for them and tolerates them? What, how does it use scientific expertise and why? This question brings us to a second question, that of uh, plurality of perspectives of uncertainties and regarding climate, this is essential. If we ask ourselves the question of the role played by science in society, we should always uh, wonder about the knowledge needed by society to face the future and the uncertainties of the future. Now, an experience-based know-how, how can it be compared with science used to uh, face uncertainties, it's counterintuitive. And vested interests, how are vested interests going to try to raise doubts regarding the uh, relevance of scientific expertise? Obviously, we need to come to terms with uncertainties uh, and past responsibilities, but we also have to come to terms with the future uncertainties. How do we tame the uncertainties within society, uncertainties regarding the climate, so that uncertainties, societies and science, society and science can live together and so that uh, decision-making can benefit from scientific expertise. Can you Im imagine the number of questions that this can raise? So I'm going to highlight and specify the way these questions can be analyzed. For a long time, it was believed that science experts counseling politicians only dealt with scientific issues, except that we have discovered that this was wrong. What we do observe is that the interaction between scientific knowledge and political development must be understood as the negotiation of scientific divergences with a political range or scope. Therefore, it's not a matter of human values transferred into political decisions, but rather a dialectic discussion between researchers with some objectives and policy makers who have different objectives. Science does not have values when it is communicated into the sphere of decision-making. If it were, then things would be different. Second question, and it has to do with what I said in my introduction, what is the ideal pathway? What ideal pathway should scientific knowledge take to influence decision-making? Now, in democracies, the natural pathway is that science must be domesticated or tamed by society. Society chooses its leaders, and the short circuit would be moving directly from scientific expertise towards political decision-making without going through society taming scientific knowledge. But this would probably lead to misunderstandings, contradictions, or 
decisions which would be contrary to society's interest. The last question is that of uncertainty. Issues that have to do with the climate are fraught by uncertainties, and therefore decision makers must have access to the whole spectrum of uh, options and the likelihood of each of the options. If some events have a very low likelihood of ever happening, but have huge impacts, decision makers will also have to think about rare events and understood, understand their likelihood of ever occurring. When a scientific expert talks to a decision makers and helps the decision makers, he develops tools and the tools help us move forward and in spite of the uncertainties that I have mentioned. One of the first tools is a traditional tool, the principle of a summary for decision makers. A summary is a short report and this was uh, disseminated by the work conducted by the IPCC group, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Changes. And, climate. and obviously, the summary helps decision making. It summarizes the state of the art knowledge. It's a short report so that decision makers have access to a large quantity of information, but summaries are prepared for them in the form of small boxes providing central results with explanation and links and references to the uh, full version of the report. But these summaries can not be uh, written only by researchers because in all kinds of communications there are transmitters and receivers, and if they are not on the same wavelength, the receivers never get the information sent by the transmitter. So the uh, summary reports are written by people who represent the scientists, the researchers, but also the policy makers or decision makers. So again, this summary summarizes the state of the art scientific knowledge, but science moves forward very fast. And the second tool was developed, the so-called called policy brief, not d'orientation in French, but policy brief is really the word used by most people. Policy brief presents the results at the time these results are obtained. Very scientific knowledge on a given subject. There are many policy briefs in Europe regarding European directives, for instance. When a research is made uh, on the uh, climatic risk uh, in a coastal environment, there will be a framework directive and a policy brief to summarize the knowledge so that decision makers can understand the stakes at first glance with the uh, state of the art knowledge and they can compare results from different places and understand which methods must be used to gain access to a given topic. The third example is the example of climatic services. Data and procedures are made available so that people can understand the topic more easily. Easily. The fourth tool is that of co-construction. Researchers and decision makers work together so that they can develop mutual trust and understanding. And these four tools are very often combined within the various projects. What can I say by way of conclusion? I don't want this presentation to make you feel feel wrongly that answers have been found for all the questions. We are developing interfacing tools to allow sciences uh, on climate uh, evolution, climate change, and decision making to work together. Very often we feel, we feel like decisions have been taken in spite of scientific knowledge uh, and wrong decisions. But we know now that uh, we can uh, make efforts and the situation is improved. Study regarding uh, climate but uh, changes is based on interfaces uh, between uh, climate change and the policies regarding climate change and the mitigation thereof, and we still have room for a lot of progress.